playing three sets of music, playing a lot of, uh, you know, songs that'll make people dance. And then we went to playing um, four nights in a row, opening up for that act, Ben Soli, where we're playing our original stuff, um, a lot more intimate or down-tempo music where people are really listening and they're not just at a bar wanting to dance and have a good time. They're, they're there to see music. And now, this leg of the tour, we're playing house concerts in people's living room. So again, super intimate, uh, real, real personal. And then at the end of the tour, we will be playing um, a couple two-night stands at some different places where... Again, there'll be uh, bars or ski resorts, so Ooh, pretty much, skiing. yeah, run, running the gamut of the different type of gigs that we can play. Yeah. A little bit of everything. Now, she's been saying like on the, on the show that you guys are, are full. Um, I hear you guys, and I'm, well, it's probably because you know that's what I grew up with and everything. Mm. But I think country. What do you guys call yourselves? Americana. Americana. Americana would be more. Yeah. You know, the songs usually start out more in the folk vein, but then I, I almost think of Americana as just folk with instruments behind it. Electric you know? guitars. Yeah. That's the um, way I, I learned in, in, um, in college. I was in the appreciation the class, country. You know, it always surprises people, my friends, when, when I'm like, you know, folk country and rap are folk, and they're like, they're nothing alike. Like, of course not. They're still folk. They're still they're different. Yeah. Different, yeah. It's different the spectrum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, it's, uh, and we, we touch on some country stuff, you know. Um, I mean, it's hard to not sound country when you have pedal steel in the band. Like, that's yeah. just like the, that's just the, the country sounds, you know. So. It, was, it, was, it was Mr. Ledoux who said, you know, even cowboys like a little rock and roll. Yeah, exactly. It's true. Exactly. So but I think um, all musicians are kind of like playing their sound together. They're not just pop and not just rock and other country. They're kind of like blending everything together. Well, and going back to what we were talking about a little bit earlier, too, when we were discussing, you know, record deals and yeah, how yeah. bands seek out various representations and things like that. I mean, I think that's derivative of so many more bands being independently managed now, is mm-hmm. they don't feel as the... I mean, you know, years past, 60s and 70s, a label would say, hey, I'm looking for a pop singer. Or I'm looking for a country singer, you know what I mean? And, and you would get pigeonholed into that, and you would get put into these radio charts based on that and, and all of that. Whereas these days, that's just so much less of a driving force, and the artists are allowed to self-identify. Yeah. Um, so you do find much more gray area, um, you know, bands that can touch on these various genres in a single it, set, you know? It evolves, too. I mean, I was thinking, you know, a little bit ago there, you know, all the such things. To me, country is Patsy Cline, Johnny Cash, yeah, all, all the yeah. good old names. George you know, Jones. You know, so, so, you know, a few of these newer people, kind of, you know, but not so much. Coming back. Yeah, but, you know, today's country, you know, I make fun of it. I call it um, Christian pop. It really is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. You know, I mean, it's pop music. Yeah. 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 Um, and, you know, I mean, any type of music is going to change that. It's going to, you know, you guys, you call it Americana, you know, type of folk there. What you're playing now, you would never hear stuff like that even 10 years ago, you know? I mean, and you go back 50 years and it's like, it'd be completely um, to you know, different. So it's, it's just a constant evol- evolution. And you know, going with, we were talking about the social media, um, it's, it's no longer the corporations, the, the labels who are defining what your music should be, it's your fans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. You, know, you, you have to play for what the fans like. I mean, you might write a song you like and everything like that, but if nobody wants to hear it, you know, it's not going to help you. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's very true. <clears throat> you know, I had a question, I completely forgot what it was. Summer. Um... <laughs> So how, how many how many tours have you guys been on? Is this your first one? Um, I've been on. I went on a solo tour in October, um, and then a year ago I went on a tour with our our old pedal steel player so and our old bass split player. Drinks off onto separate checks. I can do that for you. Um, yeah, the coffee, the tea, and the milkshake. All on one check, or yep. Yep. okay, and then nachos, hot yes. chocolate, and tea on yes. another. Okay, all right. Yeah, so I went on a 
I went on a. It was the first couple of days I was with our old pedal steel player, and then the last, you know, 15 days I was by myself, and it was all house shows pretty much. And then the year October prior to that, I went out with our old pedal steel player and old bassist, um, and kind of went up around this area. We we played in Olympia and, and Portland. We didn't play in Seattle. We went to uh, the San Juan Islands, played a little bit there. Um, that was fun. It was a nice little experiment. Yeah. I've never been to a house party, so it's my first one. Yeah, they're 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 cool. They're they're nice and intimate. Yeah. yeah. No, man, you're gonna get wasted tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I do try and stress that it's not a house party. It's a house house concert. House concert. Yeah. 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 VIP a little different. Show. Yeah. House party. house party brings along the. The fraternity yeah, yeah, idea of like, sort let's of, get drunk and mingle else. and yeah. there's music in the background. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I, I know. I'm, I was a little nervous. This is actually the second concert I've ever been to. I have a bit of anxiety issues. Oh, okay. And um, I, I went to... Um, oh. Why did she milk change? I'm, I'm having a terrible time I mean, remembering names here. Um, oh, Don Williams. I went to his... his Goodbye to her because he's like my favorite artist. Yeah. And then of course he comes too. back. Yeah. Well, they artists. always come back. They always you know? come back. They always come back. Look at, look at LC, Phil Collins. LCD sound systems back together. Yeah. After their, yeah. Their well, farewell he's, tour. he's old enough, you know, that I thought, you know, I mean, it's. Because I just think about that um, George Jones, you know, in the going back with the old country stuff, you know, where have they all gone? Yeah. There's a few people out of Nashville these days that. Are, are kind of bringing back that 70s country sound, but it's very it, it's still considered alternative in Nashville. Mm -hmm. There are guys like Chris Stapleton is a name, Sturgill Simpson is a name to check out. Um, I, I'm just thinking, you know, I mean, George Jones, um, Pam Tillis, mm -hmm. um, Oh, Lori Lynn. I mean, Lori yeah. Lynn is like in her 80s now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, um, Wayland's still kicking around, and Merle as well. Wayland was. Well, no, sorry, um, Merle is who I met. Yeah. But Merle, was Merle, Merle, well, yeah. All those guys are the age where, you know, especially with all the stuff they did on tour, I mean, a lot of those guys were, you know, yeah. Well, have you heard, really have heard, have you heard like, Chris Stapleton or Sturgill Simpson? I don't think I there's, have there's, there's a, a, the sound is, that old country sound is kind of coming back, and it's, it's getting people who wouldn't normally listen to country excited about country. I, I, I'm not thinking so much, you know, the sound, I'm just thinking all the old names are Yeah, sure. well, I mean, they're, they're all, off, you know? they're I mean, all happens, dudes. But, mm. Willie will never die. <laughs> yeah, he'll be a robot someday. A week or two again. Well, he's got plenty of, um, prison... Preservatives in them. Yeah. yeah. Got plenty of them. going to be like one of those heads in Futurama. <laughs> yeah. Totally. So, how do you guys feel about all the legendary musicians uh, slowly leaving this world? Like David Bowie. Yeah, he's been a lot. Has been yeah. Like yeah. slow recently. Yeah. I mean, uh, we just have like two more deaths. Uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff uh, Errol's, uh, not, not Errol's. Uh, uh, Paul Cantor from yeah. Jefferson Airplane. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and, and, and the lead singer too, this morning too, this lead singer too. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah, she just passed away too. Jeez. Yeah, oh, so. And it was, um, oh, Glenn Frey from the yeah. Eagles. Yeah. yeah. It was a week ago. Yeah. It's the end of an era. For so sure. it's like. It's the end of an era. It just like, did, what did. Death decided to take a day, a uh, vacation last year, and now it's collecting. I think it's just they were popular in the late sixties, early seventies, and yeah. now, now it's time for people to die. There's, yeah. there's also there are that, I mean, if I can plug um, a future show here real quick. Yeah. Um, we are actually going to have, um, I guess it's end of March. We're talking. Yeah, end of March. In, in March, we're going to have a um, a show about a good friend of mine I grew up with, a, a lady named um, Jamie Gibson Hartley. And she has, or she had a rare disease called. Um, it's often, it, it's. I'm going to pronounce this wrong. I'm sure it's it, evil. Ebola velocima, um, or EB. If you go to like ebkids.com, that's or dot org. That is the main um, site, the oldest site for it and everything. Um, she actually founded a um, a camp basically for its kids with this called EBUS or e e e um, United Survivors. Um, and it's a, it's a skin disease. Um, she died at about 36 and was one of the oldest people with this disease. Oh, wow. Um, but she started on 
on drums because that's all she could do with her hands wrapped in bandages in high school. You know, I was in, I was a couple rows in front of her, and then she couldn't do that anymore, so she started singing. And you know, we're, the show is we're going to show her, her or we're going to play some of her songs for mm -hmm. you guys. That's yeah. on March thirtieth. Yep, March thirtieth. So you know, I mean, it's it's, it's you have. I mean, this is just personal like, to me because I know her. But you've got so many aspiring artists that could be something, and then just gone. gone. You yeah. know, I mean. So, that leaves another question, Galia. What? Who inspired you guys to be musicians? Oh man, that was actually going to be one line. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. I heard the Beatles when I was, you know, four years. Old. My parents just listened to the Beatles all the time. And my mom would put on Led Zeppelin for her, you know. Yeah. And so that was I remember that from <clears throat> three years old. Raffy. Raffy. The Baron Cabadus. The Baron Cabadus. What about you, Andrew? Uh, my parents they gave me a Bruce Springsteen tape when I was there really young. So I listened to that a whole lot. And I don't know, somewhere along the line. I, I just got more engaged with things. I remember the first tape I bought was like the Weezer Blue album. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, I guess it just kind of took off from there. It got me excited. It was fun. It was different. It was something I'd never heard before. Because I, you know, I, I played saxophone. And uh, <laughs> sax was not a common, I mean, unless you like jazz. And I, I wasn't very good at jazz. <laughs> so I think that's kind of how I got started into it. I know for myself on drums, uh, I knew that I wanted to play drums when I heard Jimi Hendrix and his oh, yeah. drummer Mitch there Mitchell. He was just Jimi Hendrix was a wild guitarist, and his drummer was right, right up neck and neck with him all the time, just wildly playing all around the drum set. And um, that, that for me was the biggest inspiration. And then I was raised on classic rock, you know, the Beatles and Led Zeppelin, just, uh, just like a lot of people who are my age. You know, what got me into music was um, Blondie. Um, yeah. uh, one way or the other. I'm like, ooh, who's this chick? <laughs> I like. A bit. Yeah, exactly. I'm just jamming in, in, in the back seat, like, ooh, I like this one. And I started listening to more music. Um, my mom was really into the Herman Hermits back in the day. Yeah. Uh, her favorite singer was um, the lead singer. What was his name? Um, Herman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, ha, ha, ha. No, I can't think of his name. I'll think of it later. But uh, Paul something. I don't remember his name. But, and you think I would remember her because she had a big old crush on the guy yeah. for years. <laughs> and he actually got to play up here a few years back in the country, in the country uh, county fair. And um, he got, she got to meet him. So that was pretty cool. Got pictures of him and everything. So it was pretty yeah. cool. So I'll think of it later. Uh, ooh, that child is angry. <laughs> a singer, a future singer. Excuse me. We're trying to record a podcast here. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Brennan? What made you want to play music? Yeah. Man. I don't know. I just started playing guitar. I think it was when I... I think I played guitar. I got pretty good at it. And then I listened to Weezer and I was like... So, so I started playing guitar. What about the songwriting change? Because playing guitar in your bedroom yeah. and then starting to write songs is a vastly different endeavor. Uh, yeah. I feel like I've tried to write songs for like 10 years, and then I finally wrote, like finished the song, and I played it at like an open mic, and the guy who ran the open mic was like, it's, it's pretty good, and I was like, all right. And I was in this band where I was just playing guitar, and I showed him the song, and he was like, I like that song. So it was like a combo of like, this open mic guy, I ended up being, being roommates with, and then this guy I was in the band with, both encouraging me. So are you only the one writing the songs, or everyone from here? They write, but for this project, I'm the only one that writes the songs. So they have like their we'll, we'll arrange some stuff, as, you know, yeah. just to like make it a band song versus just when Brennan's playing it on, uh, by himself or something. But it's mostly Brennan. Mm -hmm. Scott's recording the album right now. Cool. Slowly and surely. Is, is it all about drums? Yeah, it's like you know, <laughs> a world of drummers. Yeah, <laughs> a world of drummers. Trying to give Mr. Baker a run for his money. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Beware, Mr. Baker, I'm coming. There you go. Well, too bad you can't uh, drum with animal. 
Yeah, you know, they totally. Just, they decided he was going to die, too, so animals are gone. Right, animals? Yeah, they decided to put an animal cast away. Well, maybe, maybe it's because they're...